Uh oh. I didn't need this. Definitely didn't need it. I mean, but you don't really need any of this. But I had to. I was on a whatnot stream and there was this really cool guy that was oh, yeah. auctioning yeah. off his personal collection for one one reason or another. I don't know what the deal was, but he had a lot of really good stuff and he was focusing primarily on British invasion glam seventies, sixties stuff. And this came up and nobody was bidding on it. Like, what's going on here? Hello? <laughs> Only one of the best albums of all time. And of course, I'm like, I can't just let it go. I mean, we probably own this in so many different, oh, you know, so many one, different two, CD three, releases. Three CDs, four if you count the big box set. The box set. On LP, I had like four or five times different versions because we were schmucks. Yeah, <laughs> well, basically. But my goal for this is to actually frame this one. I'm going to be redoing my office, hopefully, this, this winter. And I want to put some of my favorite ones up on the wall. And this one is just lovely enough. I mean, it's perfect. The photo is just perfection, in my opinion. That whole, there's a whole photo session of this era of the kinks that I just absolutely love. What were you going to say? I can't reach you. You probably can't either. But the first place I heard this album was on an 8-track. I still have up there oh, on the shelf. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, we have Sound, an 8-track Soundorama, this. downtown <laughs> Rollway had 8-tracks, 3 for 10. And um, I only had enough money to buy one. I wanted to buy that. And I kind of had to barter with the woman because she didn't want to do the math. Oh, dang. And I got... And, I'm always chasing that feeling of how this album felt, hearing it for the first time on an 8-track. Oh, you have no mm. books, no magazine articles to refer to. And you're just, like the first time I heard the White Album taken out of the Roy Library. And it's such a strange album if you don't know anything about it. Yeah. But this just struck a chord with me. And uh, just to think there's inside that 8-track case, there's this little oh. village, this little village world of a village <laughs> green and its inhabitants, you know, 7th grade. And, you know, I've, I don't, maybe it makes me sound like an asshole, but I've always, through high, grammar school, high school, I like listening to music and having favorite bands that nobody else in school is listening mm. to. Like, I think I mentioned, the pre special. I mentioned in a previous video, you know, snotty, big hair, Jersey girls yelling at me. Like, you listen to stuff. No one's heard. It's so stupid. Why don't you listen to something good? Like Cinderella. Oh, yeah. Led Zeppelin and Cinderella. I mean, you were listening well, to Led Zeppelin and The Who. I mean, that's, those kids. aren't, those I aren't think, little bands. I think I was the only kid <laughs> in school around 10th, 11th grade, probably 11th wow, grade, 12th that's shocking. I discovered the pretty things and love and Naz and everything, but go ahead. Yeah. Just, no, you can keep talking. Okay. Yeah, I just remember in John Mendelssohn's book, he said the look on Ray's face is like, he looks like a kid whose puppy was just run over. Aww. And also it's interesting to learn Pete Quay's full name on the back there. Yeah, what does it say on here? Um, Peter Alexander Greenlaw Quaife. Um, yeah, this there's just we could probably do an entire video just on the significance of this album in our lives and how much we love it. But I, I really can't pick a Desert favorite. Island yeah, definitely a Desert Island Disc <coughs> for me. Can't pick a favorite off of here. I love, if you get a chance on YouTube, the Starstruck video is out there. Mm -hmm. actually asked my BFF mm -hmm. to make me a scarf once that looked like Ray's in that video. I still have it. Um, yeah, and there's another one where they have a performance, a live performance on, on the julie felix show yep. from 68 or 9 and pete was still there so it was the whole band doing uh last of the steam powered trains and picture book back to back and it's just oh it's heaven for me it's so good but yeah so many it's, it's just a phenomenal album. released the same day as the white album in england but january 69 in america wow and the Turtles picked up on this record, and that made them ask Ray to produce right, Turtle Soup. Right, right. Yes, <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah, it's just so good. If you don't know this album, I just... We can't be friends. We can't be friends. <laughs> <laughs> we can be friends, but I'll try to make you listen to it. <laughs> so, yeah. It's mine. <laughs> Next up for me... Uh, 
Yeah, I think I got this at Chill Retro too. I've been wanting to check out more of these guys. I know I have some of the early albums on the island, but this is Mata Hoople, live from 1974. Uh, the top side, the first side, they're the first rock band to play on Broadway. Oh, and this is wow. live at the Eurus Theater, Broadway, New York, May 9th, 1974. And the other side is recorded live at the Hammersmith Odeon in London, December 73. There's the back cover. I don't know, I think those marionettes there were from a Broadway show that was uh, happening at the time. And also has a custom inner sleeve, with Hammersmith, Broadway with some liner notes and the track listing. And of course, you know, no big deal. It's on the Columbia label. But looking forward to checking this out because my uh, friend, uh, ex coworker Rick, is always calling up the radio show and telling me, Mata Hoople, we gotta play Mata Hoople. So <laughs> I gotta play this soon. The one Mata Hoople record I'm missing, I really want, is Wild Life. I can't seem to grab a copy. Big Somebody bucks. was showing Especially that on, on the vinyl community. Was it Tuco? I think it was Tuco he found it. Hmm. Yeah. I but I wanna get it on CD for convenience sake. Though. Yeah. But the Angel Air one is out of print in Big Buck. Same thing with the <laughs> Wounded Bird one. Up next for me is another one that I, oh yeah. <laughs> there is a lesson to be learned from this next little tale. Um, <clears throat> when we went up to Onaway, I found this record. And I was like, oh cool, do you have this, John? And he's like, no, I don't have it on vinyl. Of course we have the CDs, the Ruddles, the um, Ruddles album. I guess you could call it probably the soundtrack to the to the movie or TV show or whatever you want to call it. But the, you know, um, Price is Right, Losing Horn could be played wah, right here. Trombone. <laughs> Got the record home, found out it wasn't the right record in it was, the sleeve. But it was close in style. Because it was a Monty it was, Python record. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So, of course, lesson to me, of course, even if you're shopping with a reputable vendor, reputable, 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 reputable vendor, um, always check and make sure that the right record is in the right sleeve because everyone makes mistakes. And lucky me, I happen to do that. But I have this wonderful gentleman here to the left that went on eBay and found the record that goes Somebody was in here just the vinyl. <laughs> and got the correct vinyl for me. So now I have the complete record. Um, this of course has the cool little inner sleeve with the Mick Jagger and Paul Simon's take on the Ruddles and their, you know, legend that would last a lunchtime. Um, this also comes with which was attractive to me for it. The little um, oh, I didn't know booklet was, was also in there, which is super fun. Here the guys are for all you need is cash. Um, and just all the little quote unquote history of Ruddle Mania. It's so perfect. I love parody when it's done well, and this mm. was done extremely well. And not only because you're dealing with, you know, parodying the Beatles because it could have gone terribly wrong in the other direction. But you have these talents. You have Eric Idle, you know, the comedian. And then you have Neil Ennis, of course, who is on of his own right, very much a musical uh, genius, top notch kind of fellow. So um, yeah, definitely worth picking this up. Even though I initially picked up the wrong, I picked it up and it didn't have the right record in it. One of my biggest so concert regrets it's not going to see Neil Ennis at Maxwell's Aww. I think it was a work night or I couldn't get time off because it was well attended but not largely attended and he took time to talk to everybody oh wow and of course my friend Mark big Mark from weird New Jersey was there because he's a big oh, Bonzo so fan cool. I could have gone to see him I think Cynthia went to yeah that's just you know he's he's great how sweet to be an idiot <laughs> but yeah Rattles. Next up for me, this is a. Uh, it kind of just amazes me this, because you're so associated him with the '60s and hippy dippy stuff, but his Epic Records contract ended in 1974 or 75. But this is from 1973. It might be his hmm. second to last record. This is Donovan, Cosmic Wheels, one of his better '70s ones. 
most well-known track on here, if you want to say it's well-known, I've actually heard it on Little Steven, is a track called The Intergalactic Laxative. Oh, jeez. And uh, it's a gatefold with a picture sleeve, and it says, Get out your cosmic crayons, kids, and color in. Oh, wow. Um, I wonder if there's a lot of copies. Well, the copies that still exist, somebody you know, actually um, did that. And I think my friend Robert said this may have come with a poster, but I don't have the poster. Um, custom epic label, purple. There. Also, someone has added one of these sleeves that you always saw in your library in the 70s. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's Cosmic Wheels. This is one of the better ones. I know his, band, his one called Seven Tees is not very good. Mm. But this store I got this from, the Chill Retro, they also have his very last epic record I want to get out of curiosity called Slow Down World. And that was like his last one. It's just interesting that Epic stuck with him. For so many years after his time passed, he did update his sound, but you know, he's just so associated with Sunshine Superman, yeah. Yellow Yellow. But anyway, Donovan Cosmic Wheels 1973 on Epic Records. <laughs> Another whatnot pickup somebody was doing a stream and they happened to have this, and again. Not many people were betting on it, and even though we have it on CD, of course, when it came out, we had to get it. We have the EP. Um, this is Good Times, the Monkees 2016 release, where it's pretty much a reunion album because the three remaining Monkees at the time got back together and did an album kind of like Headquarters in the way that they chose really awesome songwriters to um, write the tunes from that they were going to sing on the album. And there's a lot of really good songs on here. And I'm not just saying that as a Monkees fan. There's just good pop songs on here written for, by people like, um, oh, goodness. What's his, I'm, I'm blanking. Adam Schlesinger. Yeah, who Schlesinger. sadly passed away from COVID. Yeah, from um, Fountains, Fountains of Wayne. Yeah. Um, guys from uh, Death Cab for Cutie. So, you know, some modern songwriters and things and, and the way that it was. And, of course, Peter covered some of his, you know, more hippie stuff with his Wasn't Born to Follow, which actually turned out quite nice, I think. Um, but my favorite on here, hands down, is Me and Magdalena. Um, that's the one that's co-written by, I believe, Ben Gibbard from Death Cab for Cutie, which I don't know a whole lot about. I know that he was married to Do Zoe de Chanel at one point. That's about as much as I know about Death Cab for Cutie. And that it's their names taken from a Bonzo Dog Band song. <laughs> I digress. Anyway, me and Magdalena, I heard it for the first time when we were in New Jersey. We were back in New Jersey. Um, John's mom was selling their family home and moving out and kind of an emotional time. Mm -hmm. And, you know, taking John's belongings out of the house for the last time and things. And I remember kind of sitting down and taking a break and I was listening to Cirrus XM radio and I think it was the underground garage. They played this. It was like debuting and the mix of Mike Nesmith and Mickey Dolan's voices. I just, I was floored for the, for like four minutes, just sitting there listening, just wow and i remember playing it for john i'm like guess who this is yeah I believe and you're it. like i know the voice yeah. i know the voice who is this i know it and i told him and he was like holy crap that is just phenomenal it's beautiful it's an amazing oh man it gives i'm like goosebumpy just thinking about it but yeah and, and i'm glad they got a chance to do this before Peter passed away, and now Mike, and being a big fan of the show, it's it's been kind of crappy um, losing these guys bit by bit, because they're such a big part of building my musical interests and everything, and people saying the monkeys didn't matter, the monkeys don't even play no instruments, the stupid crap like that, it's like, you know, you just don't get it. They, they um... You don't get word? it, and that's fine. But, you know, they transcended all that criticism, you know, and they probably just as big a fan base as the Beatles and other things. It's just these boneheaded classic rock idiots, you know, people who live in the, the people their... who live outside the Beacon Theater and see the Ulmer Brothers all year round. Those types, <laughs> you know, 
but um yeah it, they're just you know when we get to the monkeys in his collection too i'm sure we'll have a lot to say about it at that point but for me it combined everything that i love about like all the things i love about life music comedy and and cute boys so <laughs> but they're way more than that so yeah again slap a monkeys and slap the monkeys on a piece of paper i'll probably buy it like john would with the yardbirds or the who or whatever but this is actually honestly hands down really 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 good so excellent i'm kind of going out of order of purchase here but we're doing september october so i got another stack of singles here this is brand new um some friends of a friend back home in uh, new york city a new band called the High Stride. This is their EP on Crossbar Records. And I have a note on here because if you do go to Bandcamp and buy this, even though the single is marked 45 RPM, it plays at 33 and a third. Mm. Luckily, I discovered that here at home and not when I played it on our show this past <laughs> Friday because that would have been embarrassing. Like, whoops. Uh, it's a three song EP, two songs on one side, one on the other. It's kind of a hard mod garage um hope they put out more records because they got a lot of potential i uh, hope it's not just a one-off thing um i have to check with my friend lee because i don't know if these guys were in some other bands too um i'm assuming they're from brooklyn but they are in new york city but um it's uh on band camp if you want to find it there's a little lyric sleeve there 2002 crossbar records the high stride <laughs> All right, so um, the beginning of October, I'm getting into October now. You probably haven't even hit October yet. But in the beginning of October, we had the opportunity to go down to a record show in Midland, Michigan, which is a couple hours south of us. And we actually had the opportunity to possibly to meet up with the mayor of the, mayor. <laughs> the vinyl community, Steve Carlson. Um, and we just missed him. Yeah. Yeah. He, had, he was there earlier. We were there later. Yeah. It just turned out that I way. Really it's kind hope, of a bummer, but. I really had hoped to meet him because I had all these smart ass remarks ready in our next video. So, you know, we meet this guy and right away he's got his hand out, wants us to give him money to buy records. Oh, yeah, so, I'm sure. Yeah. He's no, always I look, I look, that way. It, you know, we'll meet, no. we'll meet someday. We'll only a few meet hours again. Away. Maybe yeah. we'll meet at Radio Wasteland. Yeah, I was kind of so. nervous because I'm like, I'm shy and he's like a big star. And I'm just like, <laughs> you know. He's a schmuck on YouTube. He's a like nice all guy. I know. But I just, I get, you know, I'm an anxious person. I get nervous <clears throat> meeting new people. So I was a little bit nervous. No, he's a but nice man. I, you know, I would like to meet you know, Steve Yeah, someday. I had all these cocky comments, right? You know, right oh. away the guy's got his hand out, you know, bodies for me, dude. That's how I show his, respect. That's how I show respect. It's not very humorous. It's how I show respect and admiration. I bust your balls. That means I love you. Well, I don't know about that. <laughs> anyway, so the record oh, yeah. show was kind of a bust for me. I just ended up feeling kind of claustrophobic and ended up spending most of it in the car while it's he looked for records. <laughs> and he found a few things. But I ended up having more luck when we went to a store called Electric Kitch. Oh, yeah. Good store. Really good store. If you find yourself in the middle in Michigan area, definitely <coughs> check it out. Great selection, great prices. Nice um, people. Nice people too. Yeah, real laid parking. back. Not parking like, you know, is important. <laughs> yeah, they have really good parking too, for sure. Um, but I did pick this up. This, you know, pretty common and everything. I love the cars. Didn't have any Rick Ocasek, uh solo records, but this is the side of paradise. Um, Emotion in Motion is the hit. I guess, or single from this album. So I was really happy to pick this up. Um, before we close on this, oh, there's the inner sleeve too. It's got pictures on it. Um, before we close on this section of our vinyl pickups for September and October, just wanted to see if we wanted to give any special shout outs or say hey to anybody in the vinyl community. Another reminder too, that if you have a channel that we're not aware of, because we keep coming across new people all the time I want to make sure that you drop your name below and just let us know you're out there and we'll come check out your videos and stuff um like i said we we've been watching all the regular people steve tuco um vinyl martini has a great yeah. channel telegram sam mm -hmm. uh tc cats deep vinyl track yes I forget how yep. robert's yep. on my turntable once in a while mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um 
Yeah, there's so many and it's like, I, I need to look at the list and be like, oh, oh yeah, oh yeah, them too. But um, yeah, you have no idea. We we barely watch cable or anything <laughs> anymore. I think we're really going to cancel cable because we're watching so much YouTube and, mm -hmm. you know, all the streaming channels and everything like that too. So anybody else you can think of right now off the top oh, of your head no one that's rolling around? Who's the guy with the psychedelic stuff? That, Psychedelic? Yeah. yeah. He's squared a circle. He cracks yeah. me up. He's a guy, If I'd let him into my register. You said that. Shop. I know. I think you got like a little bit of a bromance brewing there. Or something. He, he reminds me. He's like a combination of a lot of people I've known through my life. He just seems funny as hell. Not much in... Uh, in common, common musically, man. but he's, he's really funny. It just yeah. cracks me up. He's like, hey, how you doing? Yeah. That's where we talk about records. Squares, <laughs> and he has his little citrus uh, lager. Take a drink little drink right here, you know, a yeah. little sip. He's funny. But, yeah. Yeah, I like the quirky, kind of interesting people, too. Oh, so. and Trent's Records. I like mm. him, too. He used to live in northern Michigan, as I mentioned it. And he said, oh. I miss northern Michigan so much. Really? And he's in wow. the Pacific Northwest, and he has a cat he shows, too. He's really cool. Cool. He's another guy I let into my records, too. Yeah. Gosh, because you're so, you know, Some of you. exclusive otherwise. <laughs> well, no, no. Sometimes you have customers that just become part of the inner circle. Like I did at Izzy's. Uh. I was always there hanging out and I became a friend. And then you feel was, like the unappreciated was, scholar. So you shit on was, those he, who know less than he, you. No, he was. Dave was frustrated that day. Couldn't find anybody to replace Brian. And he just said, John, you want to work here? And I was like, OK. And you told that story. Ten years yeah. later. <laughs> yeah. OK. Moving on.